So coming back to this problem, we're going to look at the next part of it, um, adding on to it. But just to remind ourselves, we're dealing with a reservoir full of water that's slowly drying up over the summer. And let's take a look at what we're going to add to this. So a second reservoir loses water at half the rate of the first reservoir. And it initially had 5,000 less liters of water. They want us to write a rule to express the amount of water in the reservoir and the number of days, and then plot this on the graph. So, all right, let's think about in context again what these things mean. Half the rate of the first. Well, what was the rate of the first graph anyways? The rate of the first graph was how much water it lost per day, and it was negative 100, which we calculated above. That's the gradient, and that was the water loss. So my gradient for this new reservoir is going to be negative 100 divided by 2 because it's half the rate, so that's negative 50. And my initial amount um, for the first graph was, we can see up here, 30,000. So my y-intercept initially was equal to 30,000. And this second graph, the second reservoir, has 5,000 less, so we'll take 5,000 away from that, and we get 25. So now I've got my gradient and my y-intercept for my new reservoir. So w is equal to m d plus c, because instead of using y and x, we're using w and d for water and days. Replacing my gradient, I'm going to put a negative 50, because it's half of what the other one was. d plus 2,500. Sorry, not 2,500, 25,000. So, that is my new equation, and now I need to put that onto the graph. Well, using my y-intercept method, we'll just write it here, w is equal to negative 50d plus 25,000 for the second reservoir. Um, maybe I'll do that in black, just so it stands out differently than the other. If I'm going to plot using my y equals mx plus c method, first thing I'm going to do is plot the y-intercept, which is at 25,000. And then the next thing I'm going to use is my gradient, which is negative 50. So I need to go down 50 and over 1, um, which can be quite complicated on this graph, if you think about that, because a day of 1 would just be somewhere in the middle there. So let's, um, let's think about how we can do that a little bit easier. And there's a couple of things that we could think about doing. We could use some substitution. So the reason I'm not just going to go down 50 and over 1 is because the scale on here goes by thousands and tens, and that's quite hard to get precisely. So I'm going to look for a way to do this better. And um, so let's think about maybe using some substitution. What if I looked at day 20 instead? So let's go here. W is equal to negative 50 times 20, plus 25,000. So, substituting or substituting that in, let's figure out what we got. 50 times 200 is, sorry, 50 times 20 is going to get us negative 1,000, plus 25,000, which is going to be equal to 24,000. So on day 20, I have gone down by um, 1,000 liters. So on day 20, That'll be one point down. Oops, that's not day 20. On day 20, I will be a thousand liters less. So now I can see my pattern going on. And again, I could relate that back to the first graph, went down one over one on this grid. And this one is uh, half that rate, so it should go down one over two. And I can continue that pattern down one over two, down one over two down 1 over 2, etc. Just putting a few on here. And I'll try hopelessly, as it usually is on my laptop screen, to draw a straight line. So this is my second reservoir. And make sure that you label things. If you add a new graph, make sure you label it. 
Alright, so I've added that line on there, and again, we could go into table if you wanted to on your calculator and put in that rule and it would give you some points to plot, but um, using this method will also work for us. So what else are they going to ask us now? When will these two reservoirs have the same amount of water? Okay, so I have W is equal to negative 100 D plus 30,000. And I also have W is equal to negative 50 D plus 25,000. And if we look carefully at our graph, I know that I just did this. Um, you see when those those lines actually intersect, that's going to be when they have the same amount. So we could read this off the graph and see that it's actually on day 100 where they have the same amount. But it's important to know how to show our working for this as well because they're often looking for that. Or you might have a case where you cannot read it off the graph. So I want to know when these both have the same amount of water. So that means their w's are equal to each other. That means I can just set the equations equal to each other. And again, you can use solver or you can use your calculator with g-solve, anything that you wanted to do, but we can also do the algebra here. So I might think about taking the 100 to the other side so that I don't have to deal with a negative. And I'll make this 25,000, subtracting it from both sides. So 30,000 minus 25,000 leaves us with 5,000. And negative 50 plus 100 gives us 50. Last step would be divide by 50, divide by 50, and you get 100 equals D. So on day 100, they have the same water. Okay. How many days will the water in this reservoir last for? Alright, so this is still the second reservoir. And again, we're asking for when will they run out of water. So we're saying when does W equal 0. So we can substitute that into that equation. 0 is equal to negative 50 D plus 25,000. Subtracting, sorry, adding 50 D to both sides. We get 50 D is equal to 25,000. Divide by 50 on both sides. D is equal to 500 days. So that reservoir will run out of water after 500 days, which is 200 days more than the other reservoir. Kind of makes sense because it's losing water at half the rate. Alright, so next question. When would the second reservoir have exactly a thousand liters more water stored in it than the first reservoir? Let's look at the graph to figure out what we're talking about here. When will the second reservoir have exactly a thousand liters more s in it than the first reservoir? So what I'm looking for is when there's a distance between these two lines of a thousand, but I want to make sure it's when I have the second reservoir with more water. So I'm looking for a distance, a spot where they have exactly a thousand between them. And that might be hard to read. It looks like I can actually read it off the graph there, that that looks like the spot. So that would be day 120. But let's prove this, right? Let's use our algebra and show how, that we, ha how we can solve this if you were not able to read it off the graph. Back down there. So we want to know when our second reservoir has a thousand liters more than the first reservoir. So I'm going to write out an equation like this. When is the second reservoir equal to the first reservoir plus a thousand more? Because we want the second reservoir to be bigger than the first reservoir, so we're going to add that thousand onto the second, onto the first reservoir to equal the second. And again, that's because we're looking for when those lines cross. I want to be a thousand liters above the first reservoir, because that's not exactly how they look. I'm looking for when I'm a thousand liters above the first reservoir to be on the second reservoir. So that's why I'm going to set up the equation that way. And that's when their water is equal, so I'm just going to use the negative 50 D plus 30,000 
Oops, sorry, plus twenty five thousand is equal to negative one hundred D plus thirty thousand plus a thousand liters more than that. Okay. So let's do some simplification and solve for this. That's negative fifty D plus twenty five thousand is equal to negative 100 D plus 31,000. I'll go ahead and add 100 D to both sides. And I'll minus the 25,000 from both sides. So I get 50 D is equal to... Um, that's going to be 6,000. 31 minus 25. Next thing I'll do is divide by the 50 and divide by the 50. So we get D is equal to 120. So on day 120, the second reservoir has, oops, has 1,000 liters more than the first reservoir. And again, I mean, we've already seen this on the graph, but I really encourage best practice of, you know, use all the tools available to you for dummy checks, basically, make sure you haven't made a mistake. And come up and look and see, on day 120, is that reasonable that the second reservoir has 1,000 liters more than the first reservoir? And it is. So again, um, you can potentially read these off the graph, but sometimes they're looking to give you credit for merit or excellence on it, and the only way that you'll get that is if you're showing you're working. And to be fair on this, um, for both of these situations where we found when they had the same amount, what you would need to do is write that equation, and then you could use your calculator to solve for that if you wanted to on solver. And same here, you would need to write out that equation, and then use your calculator if you wanted to to help you solve it. Um, but you just need to be really clear about putting in your units and put it into context for your answer and show all the working that you possibly can.